Now, the former Defence Secretary Ben Wallace has said that Iran must be hit back twice as hard in response uh, to their missile attack on Israel. Now, both Britain and the US have urged Benjamin Netanyahu to show restraint in his response uh, to that Iran attack. Joining me now to discuss this is Conservative MP and former Army officer James Sunderland. Good morning to you, James. Good morning, Julia. How are you? Very well indeed. Thank you very much. You're just a bit worried about World War III, but I'm wondering whether a strong response from Israel to Iran, which is clearly a threat to peace in the Middle East, um, uh, in terms of their proxy terror organisations around the whole of the Middle East, indeed around Europe as well, um, whether that is how we best avoid World War III or whether no response or a very restrained response is how we best avoid World War III. What do you think? Well, since the events of 7th of October last year, um, we are on the brink now of conflict in the Middle East. I believe that politicians have a responsibility to dial down the rhetoric and to make sure that we de-escalate wherever possible. Um, Israel has every right to defend itself, but it's a question of timing, whether it chooses to do it now or later, or not at all. Um, Israel, in my view right now, has enough on its plate dealing with uh, Gaza and Hamas. Um, and I think that uh, any escalation right now would not be the right thing to do. Well, hold on a minute. They've got off on their plate dealing with Hamas, you know, and indeed Hezbollah, filing rockets in from Lebanon, all of whom are funded... Oh, let me check my notes. Oh, Iran. Um, I mean, this is the reason why, you know, Iran were ret was retaliating for an attack on, on a, a compound in D Damascus uh, where you know, Revolutionary Guard generals and military chiefs were, were, were killed. But that was because they have been targeting Israel through their proxies. I mean, you know, you know that, I know that, everyone knows that. So the idea that, the idea that Israel doesn't respond to a huge escalation by Iran, it is a simple matter of luck. And thanks to the aid of, you know, the Iron Dome, US, UK, uh, French, and indeed Jordanian, uh, you know, military jets shooting down some of these missiles, it's a miracle that we didn't see mass civilian casualties in Israel as a result of this attack. Would anyone be asking Israel to sort of, you know, cooler heads, cut, tone down the rhetoric, if that were the case? Of course they wouldn't. Israel's got every right to defend itself. We saw that uh, with Hamas. Um, if you look at what the Iranians are doing in the Middle East right now, deliberate destabilisation, have a look at the Houthi, have a look at Hezbollah, have a look at Hamas. There is no question at all that the Iranians are deliberately destabilising the region uh, and trying to preempt conflict. But whether or not Israel retaliates, whether or not Israel attacks Iran is absolutely a matter for Israel. And I believe that the US government and the British government are quite right in saying publicly that they would not join that. We need to de-escalate tension right now. We need to contain the crisis, not exacerbate it. Nobody wants World War III. No, no, well, indeed. Well, I mean, I don't know, apart from the Iranians, you seem to be quite keen on it. Was just, um, can I ask you about also Rishi Sunak rejecting calls coming from Labour and senior Conservatives as well uh, to uh, prescribe Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps? Uh, the concerns, of course, that, you know, th they are the ones propagating a lot of this, these terror cells and funding them. But the answer from the government has been, look, basically, you know, that is, you know, that is, is he, that is Tehran's, you know, diplomatic core as well. We need to maintain relations with uh, Iran so that we can actually, you know, have those back channels and the like and maintain an embassy in Tehran as well. Who do you agree with? Should we prescribe this organisation, which is clearly funding terror, or should we not? Well, responsible Western governments need to keep their powder dry, in my view. And uh, if you look yesterday in the chamber at uh, the Prime Minister's statement, it's quite clear to me that there are an increasing number of people now demanding that the British government does prescribe the IGC. And of course, many Labour politicians and that as well. Um, that is definitely an option that sits with the Prime Minister and the British government. But at this point in time, noting that we do need to maintain diplomatic relations with Tehran, um, you know, they, they are clearly the pariah of the Middle East at the moment. But, uh, but, but if we cut off ties with them by prescribing the IRGC, that will only serve to undermine future attempts at negotiation and peace.